this. Because of how the Lord worked and moved on Sunday, I thought a lot about what I was going to preach Sunday morning and uh, what God was doing. And I want to look at it in a Bible study fashion tonight. Amen. As you turn to Luke chapter number 17, Luke chapter number 17, And if I could, I would like to say that this is Jesus and he's given some warnings and he's saying that uh, he's talking to the disciples. I'll mention that probably again. Uh, he is telling them of the importance of being ready for his second coming and how important that is. I do believe with great confidence tonight that Jesus is coming. And I believe that we are seeing the signs of the time everywhere. Yep. And, uh, you know, everything that's played out, uh, even, you know, Brother Roger was saying about schools locally, and I, you know, someone has, has mentioned that to me at work, but I really didn't comprehend everything. And probably still don't. Um, but, you know, what happened in Florida last week was that last Wednesday, um, almost a week ago. We, we look at uh, just what's going around. I, I think even the weather, you know, the weather's kind of crazy. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, uh, uh, I'm not buying any global warming. I think it's a sign that the Lord's coming. I think everything that we see, that it's changing nature is a sign that the Lord's coming. And so Jesus, he said this in, 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 in Luke 17, verse number 32. He, in a very short passage of Scripture, you know, we think about Jesus being the shortest, but, but here is our runner-up. He says, uh, remember Lot's wife. Amen. Remember Lot's wife. Uh, if you would, turn with me back to Genesis chapter number 19. Certain things, 
You probably never, ever, ever heard of this before, but, but, but uh, uh, back where I grew up in West Virginia, uh, yeah, now our minds, but I, I wrote it down here, and uh, what did I write? Nancy Hanks. You know what Nancy Hanks is? Sister Rachel, you grew up in West Virginia. What's Nancy Hanks? Not too far away from where I live. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. I wish they claim well not in West Virginia, don't we? She was born there. And so even her house is there, this one room house, and it was a big deal to go to when I was a young person. I don't even know if it's it's open anymore. I think someone privately bought it. Uh, but but uh, uh, we we think about uh, uh, things that we remember, places that that, that are uh, in remembrance. Anyone ever hear of a place called? Uh, let me see if I can start. Monk Chunk. Mount Is that right, Brother Craig? Pretty close. How do you say it? Mock Chunk? Mock Chunk? That's as close as I can. All right. Yeah. Any, anybody know anything about Mock Chunk? Do you? You Pennsylvanians? You Pennsylvanians? That's right. It's one of the only cities that it was name was changed because they laid stake to this great athlete, Jim Thorpe, and changed the name of the place. Anyone ever been to Jim Thorpe? No? Nope. All right. My wife and I have been, and we're not even native Pennsylvanians. Wow. You all should go. I mean, it's, it's pretty neat. We walked around through some little museums, and, and, and there's a quaint uh, little street where they have all these little shops and antiques and things like that. And uh, uh, not too far away from what's the name of that place with the Burns? Centralia. Yeah, Centralia. All right. So uh, uh, all, I'm saying all that to bring you to the place that, that there are things that we remember in our society, right? Uh, we remember people because of holidays. We remember certain things because of uh, holidays that we have. Even some towns, they stake their claim. And, and because we remember somebody. Because men's lives and, and who they are will be preserved because of our remembering them. We remember Honest Day. We remember our first president, George Washington, because of those days. I remember when I was a child cutting out silhouettes of them. And I remember that uh, we were, we were uh, our school system, we went to a different place to go to school because our school was shut down. They were putting water in the town. And they were doing it during the month of February, Brother Doug. And I still remember those moments of, uh, of, of the cherry tree being chopped down and, and, and all those things. Why? Because we want our society to remember things. Jim Thorpe is remembered because of uh, uh, the athlete he is and where he came from. Uh, there's various uh, things that, 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 that we have. Someone told me recently, anyone ever hear of Federhoff's Church? They told me that went back about 200 years because they were some of the prominent people in the church. Uh, memorial, we remember people. And so... In our lives, Jesus told us to remember Lot's wife. So, uh, there are patriarchs who can remember Abraham, Isaac, Joseph, prophets, Nathan, Elijah, Elijah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, apostles, Peter, James, and John, martyrs, Stephen. But you see, Jesus told us that we were to remember not these individuals, but it was one person to remember. Remember Lot's wife. And so we have to ask ourselves, what is there to remember about Lot's wife? And, uh, you know, we can think of, of lots of people in our society who's your number. I'm not going to go through my happy list, but I'm not going to do it. But Lot's wife is who we're told to remember. And when we get to Lot's wife, we don't know her birthday. We don't know her past. We really don't know anything about her existence at all. But Jesus tells us to remember her. In fact, there's not even a name given to her that we would remember her. I'm trying to stir our, our minds to think about what Jesus is saying. 
She makes her appearance in Genesis chapter number 19. It's for once and it's for all. But we are to remember her. And uh, we, we, we see that there are a lot of people in the Bible who are unnamed. And why not remember them? I mean, the woman at Zarephath, the widow woman, who, uh, 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 the oil. We remember the Shunammite woman who constrained the prophet, come and stay at my house. And her name is never given. Why not remember her? Or, or what about the woman of, at Samaria? What about the one at the well? We don't know her name, but we know a lot about her. There's a lot of good things about her. And, and we know that there are others who Jesus the woman with the issue of blood. And, and why not anyone else? Why? Lots of them. Why remember her? And so I, I, I want us to think about that this evening. Why remember Lot's wife? We read about Lot. We read about his movements throughout the book of Genesis. You know, we, we, we would imagine that his wife is there, but not much information is given about her. Uh, we, we know that they had two daughters. Uh, we, 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 we know that. Um, but we don't know a lot about Lot's wife, except this. Would someone read Genesis 19, verse 16 and 17? Read Genesis 19. Actually, read verse 12. Then drop down to 16 and 17, so one more. When the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides? Son in law, and thy sons, and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. Was it 16 and 17? Yes, sir, please. And while he lingered, the men laid hold, laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth, and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, the that he said, Escape from thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape from the mountain, lest thou be consumed. So he, the Lord speaks to Lot and to his wife and daughter, run in hand, get out of the city. Don't look behind you. And we see that uh, as the Lord commands them to go, uh, uh, we find that that's all the information, the details that are really given to us about Lot's wife, except verse number uh, 26, where the Bible says, but his wife looked behind him, looked behind, looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. No beginning, no middle, but she had a terrible ending. And so here on the road to Zoar, we find that she is left as a pillar of salt. I want you to imagine, here she is, this family, Mother Eli, they're running hand in hand, and they're running to the mountain where God commanded them to run. And God said, I don't want you to look behind you. I want you to look in front of you. I don't want you to turn around for anything. So here is this, if you're looking at them uh, as they're running towards you, you see in the background a big a city that is on, on fire, it's burning, and they're running, and that's all you see is these black silhouettes, and all of a sudden they're, they're coming towards you, but you see that there is one that turns. And as she turns, she no longer is in motion, but she becomes a pillar of salt. So there's some troubling lessons from this lady. Let me stop here for a minute. Let me ask you this. Why do you think she was turned to a pillar of salt? There's no right, there's no wrong. I'm just simply asking, why salt? She definitely disobeyed the Lord. Salt is a preserving agent. She could have turned into a pillar of salt because she would have been a memory to be preserved for future generations. I would think that's what most folks would think. Any other thoughts on that? Salt wasn't uncommon to hear around the Dead Sea area. So there are there is salt. You know, we we, we would as she's turned salt. Uh, we find that 
Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He wasn't speaking here to the Pharisees, the Sadducees. He's speaking to the ones that he loves. And he says, I want you to remember that there are some privileges that come from knowing me. And, go ahead. Sure. As a preservative. And Jesus, who would have known that from Genesis, as time passes by, that, that, that Jesus would say, remember a lot's wife. So there's a preservative. There's definitely something that's being said here. And she turns into this pillar of salt. And Jesus says, remember lot, Lot's wife to his disciples. There they are. They love him. And he says this. He said, it shows a condition of her heart that her heart is torn into two places. That I want her to go forward, but her heart is still looking back at the world. Do you know, God wants us to remember tonight as we look at the news and everything that's happening around about us that Jesus is coming and there's no time for our heart to be torn between the world and the things of God. God wants us to be on fire for Him. He said, be not lukewarm. I would rather you be hot or cold than lukewarm because I'll spew you out of my mouth. I want you to be on fire for me. I want you to set your, uh, your affections on things above, not on things of this world. I don't want you to have started serving me and begin to look back. There was definitely a condition with Lot's wife's heart. So there's three troubling things I notice about her. The first thing is that she was almost saved. Do you ever meet someone that's almost saved? You convince them by the word of God, and they're almost, the Spirit of God is tugging, and the Spirit of God is upon you as you're sharing the gospel, and they're almost convinced, but they don't give their heart and life to Jesus Christ. They're like King Agrippa, almost, but almost isn't good enough. Almost saved. She was on the process of making her way out. Uh, the, she, she, she liked the security of her home. She liked it there. But God said you need to get out of there. There's danger that is approaching. And, and so she begins to leave. And, and as she's beginning to leave, she's torn. God does not want us to love Him and love the world. We can't do both. There can't be a straddling of the fence. We either love God and we hate the world, or we love the world and we hate God. That's what the Word of God says. And so there's no almost being saved. Today is the day of salvation. Uh, we need to hear while we may hear. We need, we, we need to repent and be converted while we can be converted. Lot's wife was escaping. She was leaving. Sodom, Zohar was in front of her. But the problem of it is, is Sodom never left her heart. God help us that we die to unrighteousness and we live unto righteousness. <clears throat> the message of Lot's wife is that we need to live unto righteousness. The message isn't to sinners tonight. The message is to us as saints to remember Lot's wife. There's nothing behind us. God saved us from this world and he wants us to come out of the world and be separate. I started off tonight by saying that Jew, those Jewish people that I read, I read to you about, the rabbi was saying how their life was founded in loving God, but it was also founded in serving others. When we find that we are becoming selfish in our nature, when it's more about us than the things of God and the kingdom of God, we need to remember lots almost saved. See, I know we've got to go to work. I know we've got to pay our bills. I know we have a responsibility to our family. And uh, I know that, you know, even salvation, it's more than not saying bad things or doing bad things. And we need to love our spouse. We need to love our children. And, 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 and you may say, I, I mess up every once in a while. Every, every once in a while, all of us slip. But you know what? The real marker of conversion is confession to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. 
If we find ourselves slipping, we need to confess it and make it right. Remember Lot's wife. Almost saved. But no, she didn't make it. And Jesus said, remember her. Destruction was behind her. Safety was in front of her. The plan of God was in front of her. But something in her heart was not settled as she went back. God said, don't go back. It's interesting. I believe that if we ask anyone who is successful in anything in life, I read about Abraham Lincoln maybe last week. Do you know that he was actually originally given command over uh, an army that was going to fight against the Black Hawk Indians and another type of Indian. I forget what it is now. Maybe some of you may remember. But Abraham Lincoln was never a leader. And, and so he didn't know the command lingo. And so Sister Rachel, he didn't know what to do. He wanted them to go through a gate. He didn't know the lingo. He told them to go through the gate and they didn't listen. So he said this. He said, okay, we break for, I think it was for, 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 for five or for ten. He said, we break for five and ten. And when we're done, we meet on the other side of the gate. And he said, the men broke up. And the next thing you know, they're meeting on the place where he wanted to be. He led them. For four weeks, he didn't fight against the uh, the Indians, but the Craig. Actually, more skilled armies came in. But in that time, he learned. And Brother Doug, as he learned, he moved forward. And one day, he became the president of the United States. You know why? Because he said, "I'm not looking back. I wasn't the best commander of an army, but I passed that, and now I'm going on to be president of the United States." I believe that if we're going to be successful in anything in our life, we have to say that is behind me. If we dwell on the past and all our mistakes and everything we ever did, we will never be successful in our future. That's just a rule of thumb. That's just common sense, isn't it? But Jesus said this, if we're going to excel and if we're going to make it spiritually, we've got to press on and we can't look back. Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark. Yes, we've all made mistakes in our life. And yes, the devil will beat you up over it. And if he can discourage you, he will get you spinning your wheels that you'll never make momentum to get to where God wants you to be. And in the end, you may not even be saved because you'll never make it to the destination where God wants you to be. So God help us not to almost be saved. Not to live life in neutral because God doesn't want us to live there. But live life in the advancement of pressing toward the prize of our high calling in Christ Jesus our Lord. We've got to press on. Almost saved. Listen. Once you get started for the kingdom of God, you and I cannot afford to look back. The price is too costly. So not only do I see that she was almost saved, but the second thing that comes to my mind is that she was almost saved. But number two, she perished. The memory of Lot's wife is that she perished. I forget now if it's first or second Peter, and I should have wrote it down. But the Bible says that Lot was saved because of his righteousness. Now, did God wink at some things that he did? I'm not going to get into that theological debate tonight because I think that we could run around chasing our tail by a lot of things. But one thing we know, the authority of God's word says that his, by his righteousness he was saved. You see, if Lot's wife would have submitted herself to what Lot wanted to do and what it was leading his family, she wouldn't have perished. But she did perish. 
I think there's one thing tonight. If you go out on a cruise ship and that cruise ship starts going down, and you go down because you don't have a life vest. But there's another thing when you hear about someone at our local lake out fishing and they fall off their boats, but they have a life vest, but they still drown because they didn't utilize a life vest. Here is a woman that did not have to die. She did not have to perish. She did not have to be a memory in someone's mind uh, to, to remember that you can be so close yet so far away. Has any of you ever heard stories of people, you, you hear stories of someone, and, 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 and what it is, they, they are so sick, they go to the emergency room, and some people don't make it past the emergency room. They die because they just, they, they die on the way in. You know, they just don't make it. But then there are other sisters that they make it to the emergency room. They get there, and emergency medicine is crazy awesome. And, and they know what to do, and they give them the round of the remedy. They go to the surgery, and, 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 and the, the doctor gives them these odds of, we don't know, statistically, this is what it says. And all of a sudden, they pull through. And then all of a sudden, before you, they get some stupid infection, and they die. It's like they made it through all of that and then they die. That's the story of Lot's wife. She's not the person who dies before she gets to the emergency room. She's the one that all these good things, and all of a sudden, a stupid thing, she looked back. And pardon me if you lose out with me, but it was stupid. It was a stupid move because the condition of her heart that she never ever harnessed and got in control. Lot's wife escaped danger only to be swallowed up by another danger. You see, we have got to be careful in our life that we are, God saves us. By His grace, He saves us. And if we're not careful, we can allow the enemy to trick us up over something and get us to lose out with God and we can die and we can perish and go to a devil's hell because the condition of our heart wasn't right. Who cares what so-and-so thinks about you? Who cares what they project on you or what their words are? It doesn't matter. And who cares what the world has and what they are trying to dazzle and offer you? And who cares what the enemy lies about? Because the truth of the matter is, God has a better way and a better plan for you. I don't believe that, 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 that we would have had to have the, the Moabites and, and I don't know, the, 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 the nation. I believe it could have been so different. I don't believe Lot's daughters would have had to have them drunk and, and the situation of perversion could have ever prevailed if Lot's wife would have got her heart in their, under subjection and given it completely to God. Who knows how the story would have ended? But her unbelief hurt her. It hurt her family. It hurt generations of people to come. But Jesus said to remember Lot's wife. May she be a memory that she was almost saved, but she perished. See, we can't go on vacation of sorts in our spiritual life. We have to make sure that we stay on our car. We have to put on the armor of God. And that is not all stand. Stand there for it. We can't look back. Not only was she almost saved, not only was it that she was almost saved, but she perished. But the third thing is her life is a warning. So from the pillar of salt comes a warning. A warning. Jesus said, as it was in the days of no so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that no entered into the ark, and the floods came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it is in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they goaded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. 
when the Son of Man is revealed in that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. He said, remember Lot's wife. Be ready when Jesus comes. See, God wants us to be ready. He wants us to be spiritually awakened. God wants us to pray. God wants us to take our spiritual vows seriously. God wants us to fight the fight of faith. God wants us to fight for our conflicts and come forth victorious. No man having put his hand to the Bible and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Not letting up for ourselves treasures on this earth where moth and rust doesn't corrupt, but laying ourselves up treasures in heaven. Remember Lot's life. Escape for your life. Don't look behind. Don't, don't stay in the plane. But head for the mountain. Remember Lot's wife. Does anyone have, have anything they want to say about Lot's wife and what that means to them? Could you just flip that off for me right now? 